Hey everyone, it's James from The Fit RV, and this is it, number 10. Welcome to the last of the shop build videos. Gonna try to get a lot done on this one, so it may take me a while to get the video out. And I've already kind of gotten started. So the first thing I wanna show you is I've already made this drill press table, um, which is something I needed since I got a new drill press. And if you're wondering why it's got this funky cutout on the back of it, if you can see that, it's so the handle will, so you can raise and lower the table. Um, anyway, I watched a lot of YouTube videos from other folks who made drill press tables, and this pretty much follows a lot of what's commonly done. There's some T-Track in there with a fence that slides around on the T-Track. That's great, locks down on these T-bolts. The, the big thing I got from YouTube is everybody put an insert and everybody pretty much does it off center. The drill bit will come down right there. Uh, the reason they do that is so that when you wanna back up the cut, right, you're, you're drilling into that surface right there. Then once that gets all crapped out, you just kind of rotate it. And now you're gonna be drilling right here and you've got a fresh surface. And so you've got four and then four, eight, and I made about 30 of these six by six inserts. So I got like a couple years worth of drilling with no tear out. Anyway, so that's first thing. Next thing I'm gonna to try to do is get the compressed air system working. And I kind of went around and around. There's a compressor back there. I want four, five different outlets all around the shop. And I went around and around trying to decide what to plumb it with. And in the end, I wound up with, I don't know if you can see it down there, copper. And the reason I went with copper is just because I like the looks of it. It's really cool looking. There are some other cool systems that uh that had like you know, like a pex kind of tubing you know but that would tend to sag and look kind of sloppy you know i like that copper is rigid it's going to be nice straight lines in the shop and it like i said it just looks cool but one of the companies i found when i was investigating this stuff is rapid air and by the way they're extremely nice people like i ordered i made a mistake and ordered five of the wrong part and i called to talk to them about it and then poof like they had sent the right part overnight before I was even off the phone almost. It was weird, but they're very nice. Um, they had a system with some of this uh, kind of tubing stuff that I didn't go for, but they had other accessories on there that I really liked, like this aluminum outlet block for the compressed air, and then little drain valves and stuff like that. And I got a bunch of these, and basically when, you, when I get them assembled, I'm gonna have four or five of these things. This is what it's gonna look like. There's a drain valve on the bottom, the compressed air comes in on the top, and we've got a cool kind of a safety valve push connection right there. Okay, so let me show you why I kind of dig these little quick connects. So normally, you know, quick connect is like a two-handed thing. You've got to pull the, the collar back and then put the, put, put the male end of the connection in there and then let it go. These are sort of a one-handed deal. You just push, boom, it's in there. The other thing I like about them is you ever like let go one of these and then the hose goes because all the air that was stuck in the hose is like letting out. So this has a button. You just push the button, air drains out of the hose, hose doesn't whip around and smack into stuff in your shop. And then you push it again and it pops out. So kind of one-handed operation and they're safe. That's kind of why I like the quick deck. So I got a whole bunch of this stuff from Rapid Air. Now to assemble all the copper piping, I know the plumbers amongst you are going to say, oh, you should just sweat the valves. And yeah, but I don't know how, and I don't feel like learning for this one project. So, and I'm especially like on the wood walls, I don't really feel like operating a blowtorch up against these wood walls. So I've got some push to fit connections here, and that's great. Now you might be thinking these are like shark bite connections, but they are not. There are two reasons they're, they're pro bite. And there are two reasons why I went with these instead of the shark bite. The first is if you call up ProBite and you ask them, are your fittings rated for compressed air? They will say unequivocally, yes, our fittings are fine for compressed air. If you call up shark bite and ask them that same question, you'll get kind of a no. And so that was one thing that kind of heavily pushed me towards these. Um, the other thing is these come with no little PEX stiffener inserts inside of these. I mean, they come with them, they're just not installed. And since I'm using rigid copper pipe, I don't need the stiffener inserts, and so not having something I didn't need was kind of appealing. Now, the one disadvantage of ProBite, of course, is I have to mail order these, and the SharkBite fittings I could just run down to the home center and get. So hopefully in the giant, here's a giant box of all these fittings that I got some 100 fittings or so, um, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes in what I needed and I have all the parts I need, otherwise there will be a delay. But uh, so that's what I've got to install. So 
I'm going to get to it. You know, we've got we've got compressor. Uh, what do you call it? Filter regulators. I got a uh, little flexible hose to hook up to the compressor itself. Whole bunch of stuff to get going on. So I'm going to get started on that, and we'll check in maybe I don't know like halfway or so. Okay, we're back, and I really am, I think, about halfway through with the compressed air thing. But I figured this would be a good point to show you kind of where I'm at. First, um, I don't know if you can see that there. Don't try to bend type L copper pipe with a conduit bender. Um, it bends, you can see, but it get a little too many kinks, and I, didn't, I wasn't satisfied with how that turned out. So I decided not to use that. So basically, I just wasted that piece of copper. Great. Um, Okay, so there's going to be basically, the way I'm going to set this up, there are going to be two arms of the compressed air system coming off of the compressor. Um, I debated doing the whole, you know, ring or loop for the compressed air, but I mean, let's face it, it was just going to be extra copper and I'm one guy, so I'm going to be using one tool at a time at most. And so it just didn't seem that the benefits were worth the extra cost and hassle. So two arms. Um, so in here, I don't know, I'll have to take some other shots of this, but you can kind of see there's a, out of the compressor to a filter regulator, and then we're going to go up, and that's where we're going to T in there. And then I poke through the closet wall, and here we are. There's a, a T, and here's the first of my installed compressed air outlets. We've got the drain valve in there. It's not pressurized right now. You know, the drain valve and the cool thing. I did have to stand this off from the, uh, from the wall just because that copper is running up along the trim and so I needed to stand it off so it wouldn't be like all cattywampus. Um, anyway, from there we go all the way down this wall. Um, I didn't figure I'd be using any compressed air in the middle here um, until we get down to here. Now, here is the second of my outlets, but this one doesn't have a quick connect because this goes to my hose reel. The hose reel has the quick connect. The hose reel is right by this door because outside this door are RVs. So then I can winterize or air up the tires, whatever I need to with that. So there we go, that's number two. And I've got the third one installed. So what we can see, I'm kind of pointing up now, but so from there, I had to kind of go up, and I'll show you that in more detail in the corner. I had to go up and into the corrugations of the ceiling in order to clear the garage door track. And I'll just have to show you that in other shots. But so, and then I come down over here. Now this is gonna be like where my finishing is gonna take place, like spray finishing, that kind of thing because if it's something really messy or obnoxious with fumes, I can take it outside because I'm right by the doors. So I've got a secondary filter regulator here because, you know, I intend to leave that other one set to like 100, 110 pounds. And then this will be down to like 40 or so PSI for my spray guns. Um, I do have a quick connect here because I might take something else outside to run it. And so there we go. Now, the hard part is to come and that's why three out of five kind of gets me halfway. I've got to get to the other side of the shop, which means I've got to go, I can't go, I know it looks like I can go over the beam, but I can't. Um, and I can't go through it, lordy. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do is uh, e, 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 to get back over to the other side of the shop. So it's gonna be a lot of little pieces of pipe and a whole lot of deburring and futzing to get it to snug up close to the beam. And then once I get over there, I'm going to put another outlet. I'll show you. There will be another outlet over here by this bench where I do, you know, like die grinders and stuff like that. They'll be over here. And so there'll be another outlet kind of here somewhere. But first, I got to get over that beam. And then I've actually got to get over that beam again here on the back side. So I got a whole lot of elbows to install. But once I do that, then I'll be able to run the other outlet over there. So that's going to do it. Um, I guess uh, I got nothing to do but get back to work. So we'll catch you at the end of uh, getting the compressed air installed. All right. Okay, welcome back. And I have completed the compressed air piping project. And I've started on some other stuff, and we'll show you some of that. But uh, first, finish up on the compressed air. Um, ran the other T off of the closet, and I punched out of this wall, drilled a hole. And then I got 
to this, and this was a lot of fussing, and it made me kind of an unhappy guy while I was doing it, but I got it done around the beam, and I did another one on the other side of the shop. And then this one comes over here, all the way over, and right down here, so now I have compressed air available at my workbench. Great. The other one is uh, down at this end of the shop. And I did the same thing, except this was even fussier and less pleasant because I had to work in that tiny cubby. Um, but came around the beam, up over, and then I ran over to here. And now I've got compressed air here at the, uh, at the metal bench. So, I did that and then I had to do a couple other things to make sure we were good to go. So the very first thing I did is I turned on, you know, I dialed up the pressure and then I opened the valve here and then there was pssss, it was the sound of disappointment. Um, so I had a leak. Uh, turns out the leak, I don't know if you noticed, but here that one fitting there, that one elbow, it's kind of a different color from the others. So it turns out, um, when I read about the ProBite fittings, like most of the time when they fail, it's installer error. And yes, um, when I had, uh, since I was so fussy when I got to this, I actually inserted one of the pipes kind of at an off angle and I had torn one of the, uh, the ceiling O-rings. And so that fitting needed a new O-ring. Um, but I didn't have any O-rings, but what I did have was a shark bite fitting, and shark bites are the one you can get at Home Depot. Um, they are not technically rated for compressed air, but I had it, and I didn't want to wait another week because these Pro Bites, they get, like, mailed in from Rhode Island or something. I didn't want to wait another week, so it was easy enough to disassemble, and since these fittings all rotate after you get them done, I just, eh, it was easy to put a new fitting on. And so I got the new fitting on, and so far, it's holding. So once I got that fitting replaced, I came back, I dialed up the pressure, opened the valve, and there was some popping and creaking as things settled into place, but then everything was quiet. So I'm like, okay, cool. So then I shut the tank, and then I left it, I did the PSI, I left the PSI at 100, and I left it like that for two days, and it stayed there. I had no leaks whatsoever, and two days is longer, actually, than they make you uh, do a, like a propane leak test in your RV. So, Two days, no drop in pressure from 100 PSI. I figured we were good. The next thing I did is I came around, this is gonna get loud, to all these valves and did like a little of this, just to make sure I had blown out. I did it for like a full 10 seconds on each one um, to make sure I had blown out any debris or anything like that that was in the lines. And I did, and so now we're good with the compressed air. Um, the next thing that I started uh, working on over here, you can kind of see I've got the beginnings of a table. Um, I've got the base built and I've got a lower shelf on it here that's just a piece of laminate. Uh, this base, it looks like two by fours. It's not actually two by fours. It's, a, it's cedar that I planed down to square it up and then I put a, just a amber shellac on it. So the base is there and it's solid. And then I'm gonna build up a two inch top. What this is going to be is going to be an outfeed table for my table saw. It's gonna kind of sit in that area over there. Um, I had an outfeed table on my last table saw in the old shop, so that's why I'm building it. But the one I had in the old shop was like this drop down thing with rollers and it was kind of fussy to use. So now I'm building a permanent table since I've got kind of a bigger shop. So I've already started on that and that is gonna be uh, what I'm working on today. There'll be a piece of black laminate on top so it matches nicely with the black laminate top on the extension table on the table saw. And then the next thing, I don't know if you caught this, but this finally gave up, right? So I had this just kind of taped in here in a hokified manner to uh, be able to run some dust collection of tools while I was working. And it finally gave up and fell off, which is really telling me that I need to get started working on the, uh, on the dust collection system. But that's gonna require help from Oneida, the dust collection manufacturer. They have a service, you send them a plan of your shop and what you want, and they will kind of tell you what parts you need. Oh, I didn't point this out, I guess. Um, this overhead is a track I got, so when I have compressed air and I wanna use like a, an air nailer here on this assembly table, I can like run the, the line or a vacuum line, power cord, whatever, up overhead, and have it come straight down and it won't get in the way of whatever I'm doing. Um, cool. 
Anyway, but the dust collection is really getting on my nerves and that's kind of going to be the next big thing after I get this outfeed table done. So that's where we are now. It's uh, finishing up that outfeed table and then uh, some, some serious computer time planning out the dust collection. So that's what's next. And we're back and it's actually been several months since the last video clip. And the last clip, we had like a trip to England and we've been to three different national parks and whatever. It takes me a while to get to anything. But in the last clip, I was working on this outfeed table for my table saw. And as you can see, it is now complete. But this is not the same table you saw me working on in the last clip. We had a bit of an incident with it. So I had the table all kind of ready to go. We had a sheet of laminate to put on the top. And then uh, we went to put it on there and then it stuck down, it's contact cement. And so it stuck down in the wrong place and it being contact cement, it bonded on contact and we could not adjust it. And it basically ruined the whole top. It was covered with glue and full of screws. And I threw the whole thing away. And that really distressed Steve. You've seen Steve in some of these videos, he's helping me out. It really distressed him just the amount of, of colossal waste that was involved there. Anyway. We have a new top which was made and uh, this I actually just used a piece of melamine that already had the, the, the bonded to it. Um, so this is good. We've got, as you can see, the, uh, the slots here routed for the, uh, for the miter tracks on the table saw. And we've got all my stuff stored down below and up off the floor. Yay! Okay, um, so now for the day that I've been simultaneously anticipating and dreading all at once. Anticipating because it's gonna be so cool, dreading because I know it's a lot of work. Um, my dust collector over here in the corner has had this hokey hose that I've been running around all over the shop with anytime I wanted to collect dust. That's gonna change. Um, I contacted the good people at Oneida who agreed to make me a second plan. They have a duct design service where they'll actually, if you show them what your shop looks like, they'll give you CAD drawings of uh, how you should design your ductwork. And they did it for me a second time. And then I bought a whole bunch of parts. Some of these I had previously, some of these, those on the floor are mostly new. These are a collection of new and used parts that I salvaged from the last shop. Um, anyway, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of sharp sheet metal, cutting your fingers to ribbons and working overhead, sore shoulders, all that kind of stuff. Um, but at the end of it, we should have a pretty cool dust collection system for the shop. Um, I guess there's not really much to it except, uh, except getting to work. The very first hassle is going to be getting the dust collection piping from inside the closet over here to outside the closet over here, which means I got to saw a seven inch hole in the closet wall. Um, that's actually the part I'm most worried about. Once we get outside there, it's just kind of like uh, an erector set kind of a thing. So here we go. Okay, well, the first step was to get out of the closet and we've done that. So it involved actually getting a really large hole saw and sawing a seven inch hole through both this outer wall of the closet and this inner wall, which is sort of a drywall that I put in there to absorb sound. Uh, flexible elbow, we got it banged out. And now we're starting to put, I don't know if you see that up there, we're starting to come around and start working the rest of the duct work. But that was, I think, probably the hardest part or gonna be the hardest part. And it's done, so onward. Okay, check it out. So we're like a one weekend into this and I thought this would be a good break project. I'm probably over 50% done now, maybe like 60 or so. All right, so you saw where I was coming out of the, uh, move this coming out of the closet before. Um, well, I actually removed a lot of this uh, tape because I just thought it was ugly. So I'm going to go back and seal that with silicone. I'm going to have to stare at this for like a long time. So I want it to be something that doesn't make me think it's wadded up tinfoil. Anyway, um, we've got some of the main or most of the main run done. It's going to run right down along this pipe for the most part. Let me bring it up there so you can see. There we go. Um, Got drops on the post. This first one is mostly done. Um, we've got blast gates. I think this one is functional right now. E. There we go. Blast gates. Those are all working, running to the table saw, and this will be running to that little sander that's right over there. Uh, moving further down this way. 
Oh, I want to show you what I did to hang the ductwork. It's kind of cool. It's this little, let me bring it in closer. This little kind of cable system. Let me show you that. See these cables and these like little one way, it's kind of like zip ties and cables and it works really well. It's crazy expensive though, but it works really well. And once you get it up there, you know, it's pretty solid. Um, we've got this second drop, let me see over here. Second drop mostly done. This goes to the band saw and the router table. Actually, that one's all the way done. Um, and then we have woo, stuff all over the floor out here and we've come this far. And then that is where we've made it to right now. See up there. Um, so we're going to have one more drop that's going to have three hoses on it over here on this pole for the jointer, planer, and, uh, and uh, what do you call it, um, drum sander. And then, in what will be probably the hardest part of the whole thing, we're going to kind of come out of here and go underneath the ductwork. Uh, a good way to even show that. Come underneath up along the ceiling, and then we're gonna run all the way over here to the drill press. So that's still to go. Plus, since I decided not to tape everything, I'm gonna wind up doing a lot of, uh, a lot of silicone ceiling. Oh, and also we've got this other run up here across the ceiling. See some more of the little hangers up there. Other run over to where the panel saw is gonna be. So that's where I'm at now. We'll uh, check back in when I'm just about done. Okay, and welcome back. And at this point, the dust collection is pretty much done. And I say pretty much because there's one more project that I'm tackling over there before I call it totally done. But all the dust collection, all the tools, that's all run. So let me show you what we've done. So we had it mostly done like up to here last time. We had the drops done. And one thing I think is cool is you can only really see the dust collection much from the other side. You don't see much of it from this side of the, uh, of the shop. You see more of it from this other side over here, right? And as you can see, we've got this final drop done here. Da da da. We've got the three tools. We've got all the hose run, to all the machines, all the blast gates are work, working. And I've even gone and siliconed every single joint and place in the dust collection. It was a nightmare of silicone and 300 paper towels and whatever. Anyway, um, the dust collection is all pretty much run there. And let me show you this last little thing I've got to do over in the closet. The dust collector is going to be in this closet. And I'm going to put doors on the closet, which means I won't necessarily be seeing the dust collector. So kind of out of sight, out of mind, right? Well, if it fills up with dust and then quits, it's, it's a huge mess to clean up. I've done it before. It's embarrassing and it's just awful. So I've got a dust monitor, which I'm going to mount into the lid of this drum where the uh, where the dust is collected. So the way it works is you plug it in and there's a little relay and a sensor, which when you see, there we go. When you get something in the way of the sensor, the light flashes. And so I'm going to mount the light up on the on the outside of the closet and we'll mount this on the inside. Now, as you can see over here, I've already sort of run. There we go. I've already sort of run the power cord through a small hole in the wall. And so that's what I'm going to use to power it. And then I have to actually kind of rewire this. Um, I can't really show that. I'm going to have to rewire that to get the wires to come straight out the back to come into the closet as well. So once I get that done, dust collection's all done, and then it's on to building a door. Okay, and here we are. So I got the, uh, the little dust level monitoring thing installed. You can see the, uh, there on the, uh, on the top of the drum. I've got the sensor and I've got the light mounted up here and I've kind of tried to tidy up the wires a little bit, but they weren't very long, so I didn't have a lot I could do with the wires. Um, then I kind of trimmed out this closet. I don't know, it had been kind of unfinished this whole time and it was bugging me, so I trimmed it out. Then I did one more thing, um, which had to do with, I'm gonna put doors on this closet and if you think about the dust collection, it sucks a whole lot of air from out here in the shop, sucks it all, and then it exhausts it into this closet and it comes out through this filter here. So think about it. If you've got the doors on there and the closet sealed up and you run the dust collector, you're going to pressurize the closet. And that didn't really seem like a good way to go. So I had to make a way for exhaust air to get from the closet back outside. So I did that over here. I've got, I don't know if you can see it down there. I put a vent there down by the floor. And then coming around, coming around here inside the closet, it's kind of way back there, but I've got another vent kind of right, right there. And it is deliberately offset 
from the other vent so that the air has to go kind of like that so that it's not a straight shot, trying to keep the noise down. So I've got that there and I actually like did the calculations. I've got about six times as much vent area as the diameter of the dust collection inlet. So I think we'll probably be okay. Um, and so I got that installed and I had to remove the insulation from that one wall cavity to do it. And then at 1.42 p.m. on December 7th, 2019, it kind of occurred to me that the shop was complete. Um, yes, I still have to build a door, but building a door is a woodworking project. And so by complete, I mean I now have no excuse for not being able to do anything I was able to do in my old shop before we moved. It took a little more than a year, and uh, yeah, I don't deliberately not adding up how much it cost because I, I just don't want to know. Um, anyway... There we go, shop's complete. Next time I'll actually, if I do another shop video, I'll, I'll show you the doors and give like a whole shop tour. Maybe that's what I do next with the shop tour. So as soon as I get the doors built, we'll do that. And I guess that's gonna do it. See you later, bye.